Hello, I'm Guillaume, and for my thesis, I'll be looking at adaptive anti-fragile airport terminals as the future of aviation. Within just this year, we have seen the role of the airport terminal impacted as the global pandemic greatly restricted air travel. As we imagine airports of the future, we have to think beyond the current static models of today and start reimagining more adaptive and dynamic terminal spaces. In the near future, we'll probably see the shifting of processing facilities, such as check-in and baggage, into the city. We will also see a shift towards a more personalised travel with more flexible terminal spaces. Looking into adaptive frameworks, we can strive to go beyond robustness to allow the system to gain from stress, which is the concept of anti-fragility put forth by Nassim Taylor. Instead of engineering a fixed solution for the future, an anti-fragile system often has a flexible framework, allowing it to adapt to different undefined future scenarios. Contextualizing this framework, the thesis first envisions airports of the future as a series of dynamic states that can be reconfigured based on the changing rhythms of the airport. This could be in terms of reconfigurability of circulation flows, as well as spatial reconfigurability. The thesis also reimagines airports as a choreographer that is able to dynamically route its passengers and reconfigure elements in the airport terminal. Combining the two roles of the airport, the thesis hence visits the adaptive circulation framework as a means of achieving anti-fragility for airports of the future. Changi Terminal 5 was chosen as a site given that plans for the terminal has been delayed for at least two years due to the pandemic. To realize this vision of a reconfigurable dynamic airport, we must first determine the overall static terminal configuration before zooming in and looking at reconfigurability within the terminal spaces. And this is done through two scales of optimization. The overall goal of the optimizations is to firstly distribute flows such as the spaces within the terminal is evenly visited without creating any undesirable congestion in any particular area. And secondly, to ensure that circulation is intuitive and stress-free. Firstly, looking at the terminal configuration where macro flows are first designed, the goal was to achieve a terminal configuration that is flexible, able to spread flows, and provide an intuitive and stress-free experience. To approach the design, a parametric model is first defined and the various configurations evaluated. Multi-objective optimization is then employed to explore this design space. The parametric model aims in generating solutions with a central spine and subsequently branches. And on top of the goals of providing a good global experience outlined earlier, the optimization also aims to ensure that the generated configurations are functional by meeting the necessary clearances. The evaluation of the experience is based on different types of circulation, namely departure, arrival, and transfers. People are assumed to move along the shortest path to simplify the calculations, as the tool should not have a significant impact at this scale. The goal of the optimization is hence as follows. The objective space can be visualized as such, and out of these solutions, I'm interested in 215 Pareto optimal solutions, and they can be visualized here. As there exists multiple different tennis objectives, it becomes difficult to comprehend the complexity of the trade-offs in higher dimensions. A self-organizing map is used to reduce this high-dimensional data into two dimensions, such as the nuances between the performance of the Pareto optimal solutions can be easily visualized. This video here shows the training phase of the SOM. The resulting map shows solutions clustered based on how they perform. The SOM allows for the broad classification of solutions into different larger clusters, and I chose to shortlist solutions from cluster 5 as it represented solutions which perform reasonably well among all different fitness objectives. To pick a solution from cluster 5, what I was looking for was how we can achieve flexibility in a static configuration. This solution was eventually selected, and I then looked at how the different circulation would work out in greater detail. The master plan shows how the terminal would sit in the site. The processing facility and the main terminal is separated to allow for the provision of a clean terminal to separate travellers and non-travellers due to recent health concerns. The branch configuration of the terminal allows for flexibility in terms of circulation flows. In the case of the pandemic, it allows for flights from countries with similar outbreak severity to be clustered together, allowing for different flows to be segregated. It also allows for transfers between affected countries to be segregated within a terminal wing. As the outbreak gets more serious, the affected area can then be expanded. With COVID-19 as a case study, the classification of passengers will allow for easier segregation of flows and we will see more stratified travel during pandemics. This section shows the overall departure and arrival circulation and the corresponding urban connections to the site. 
Departure circulation can be separated into three distinct pathways. Passengers who have checked in in the city can proceed directly into the main terminal and to their gates after clearing the necessary checkpoints. With check-ins shifted into the city, more passengers would arrive via the MRT, and they can clear the health screening and passport control once they exit the MRT and rejoin the circulation in the main terminal. For those who have yet to check in, they can do so at the processing facility and rejoin the circulation after. For arrival circulation, passengers can clear the necessary checkpoints in the main terminal and collect their baggage in the processing facilities, and the following shows the respective transfer flows. The overall circulation of the language of the terminal is that of curvy linear pathways to enable greater visual access to the path ahead, allowing for more time to make wayfinding decisions, resulting in a more seamless passenger journey. In most airports, arrival is located below departure, and this results in a huge contrast between arrival and departure experience. Wayfinding becomes complicated for transfer passengers as they often do not have visual access to the departure area and still rely on a series of signs to port back up into the central terminal space. By locating arrival above and using terracing as a wayfinding strategy, gives passengers a sense of continuity both visually and spatially as they naturally flow downwards as they transfer. Locating the arrival above also allows arriving passengers to share a similar spatial experience with departing passengers as they arrive. Circulation in airports is defined by a series of airport processes, focusing on the departure circulation. Most airports adopt a centralized security model and locate security immediately after passport control. This could potentially become a huge congestion point in the airports, adding unnecessary stress for passengers. To spread out congestion and provide a better experience, we could decentralize and space out passport control and security. Taking this one step further, Shifting security increases the area of the non-secure zone, further allowing congestion to be spread out and the departure experience more seamless. Focusing on the transfer process, the first security configuration would require transfer passengers to clear security before heading to the gate. Shifting the security allows transfer passengers to clear security at their respective gates instead, making the transfer process more seamless and stress-free. Within the day, Changi sees changes in arrival and departure loads. For example, a majority of transfers happen in the evening. Reconfigurability in terms of security allows for future airports to adapt to these constantly changing airport rhythms. This could be the security configuration when there are low passenger loads, and when passenger loads increases, the area of the non-secure zone could increase to allow for a more seamless departure and transfer experience. Now that we have looked at the macro flows of the airport, how do airport spaces change the experience on a more human scale? We can then consider these three passenger personas. The business traveller frequents the airport and will probably want to get to the gates or lounges as fast as possible, whereas it's the first time the explorer is visiting the airport and will want to take in as much as the airport can offer. Focusing on the central terminal space, the goal is to achieve a spatial configuration that can reconfigure such that it can constantly adapt to these changing passenger preferences and be comfortable and intuitive. To approach this, a parametric model first generates a movement graph, and an agent-based model routes agents through this graph. The agents evaluate the performance of the spatial configuration, which is then fed into the optimization algorithm. The parametric model generates the movement graph and allocates programs via two consecutive Voronoi subdivisions. It is assumed that the spatial configuration would then be mirrored. Given the programmatic allocation, the attraction of various program areas can then be modeled after gravity, the magnitude of attraction is weighted by a distance square. With this gravity attraction model, circulation paths through the terminal can be determined by different program affinities. For example, if we were not attracted by any programs, this would be the resultant path through the terminal. If we were only attracted by retail, this would be the resultant paths. And depending on different combinations of programmatic affinities, different paths through the terminal would arise. The circulation path shown here are affected by a single global program affinity. However, different passengers have different program affinities. Revisiting the three passenger personas, these batch program affinities can then be captured by a series of random weights for each of these personas, depending on their preferences. In addition, wandering behaviors are also conferred to the agents to allow them to wander off when they are attracted by neighboring happenings. As such, different agents can then be routed across the terminal based on their differing preferences and the agents would then represent groups of different passenger personas. Similar to the first optimization, 
This optimization aims to provide a good global experience. Individual passenger experience can also be measured here in the perspective of the agents. These are hence the various metrics measured, and the goal of the optimizations is hence as follows. Looking at the objective space of 5,000 solutions, there are 35 Pareto optimal solutions which are visualized here. The resultant spatial layouts have all clearly defined paths near the origin and destination, with a mesh of paths in the middle. Similarly, an SOM is also used to group similar solutions together based on how they perform. As the thesis proposes the future adaptable airports to be a series of dynamic states, the optimization of the central terminal space no longer looks for a single solution. Instead, we can consider the set of good performing solutions as possible spatial layouts the airport can take on, given different situations. This set of solutions can correspond to changing rhythms of the airports across the month, as demographics of the travelers changes. We can then map the needs of the airport given different passenger preferences as well as passenger loads to the different configurations of the SOM. When passenger loads are lower, passenger flows can be less evenly spread out. When there are more explorer personas, the airport can take on a configuration that allows for flows to be divided slightly unevenly throughout the terminal to generate bus and to activate spaces as you can see on the right. When there are more business travelers, the central space could take on a configuration that allows for more directed and linear flows. When passenger loads are high, programs can be more distributed to spread flows across the terminal. The result of the optimization should be viewed as a diagram, and to rationalize these results, the cumulative agent paths can then be bundled to form circulation paths. To allow for the airport to reconfigure between different configurations, a series of programs and landscape elements are first fixed. This could be anchor tenants such as your duty-free shops as well as your lounges. Reconfigure elements in the form of ports and smaller landscape and seating elements are provided. As you combine these layers, what we have here is the distributed layout with more parcels and circulation paths to distribute flows. The reconfigurable elements can shift to allow airports to configure itself into other layouts. And this is how we can imagine airports adapting to changing passenger preferences and loads. Changes in the airport occurs at different scales and frequencies. On a larger scale, F&B and attraction ports can change every few weeks to enable the airport spatial layout to change. More personalized and smaller ports located across the central terminal space and the departure wing can change daily or even hourly depending on the demographics of the travelers. Pilot robots could help move these ports around the terminal. The value that reconfigurability brings to these ports is that we are able to constantly curate new experiences for passengers. If we imagine the future retail experience for airports, there could be normal physical stores. Concept and experiential stores can also be introduced where the stores could be digitally serviced. And to further decentralize the retail experience, smaller digital stores and collection points for people to either order or retrieve pre-order goods can be located far away from the central terminal space near to the gates. For the F&B experience, to cater to the different needs of passengers, there could be dining stores as well as takeout kiosks. People can also order food and have these food delivery robots delivered to them throughout the terminal. Attraction spaces could also be provided for all ages, ranging from exhibition spaces to digitally augmented playscapes. These attraction ports could also be shifted away to make way for a plaza for regular festive decorations or events. Within the large airport terminal, smaller personalized ports to rest or work could provide respite and a better sense of place for passengers. These ports can come together to form a vibrant central terminal space. As we move into the secondary terminal space, the roof lifts up, revealing a panoramic window in a sunken plaza, giving passengers a sense of orientation with a clear view to their side. The sunken plaza also serves as an alternate space for people to slow down and rest against the backdrop of the airfield. Moving to the departure wing, passengers could possibly reserve a rest port when they enter the airport to use this personal space to rest and have food delivered to them via a robot. Once the port is occupied, it will turn frosted, providing privacy. The different ports at the departure wing becomes an experience that breaks down the rigidity of the traditional rows of seats, allowing the passenger experience to be more personalized. To allow for more personalization, the airport could actively pre-map the passenger journey, such that passengers can be routed through different paths in the airport depending on their preferences and the current occupancies of spaces within the terminal. This on one hand can aid in spreading out passengers and on the other in the perspective of the passenger, providing a more personalized experience. So to sum up, 
Among all building typologies, the airport terminal is the most susceptible to change. Change compromises the function of the airport, evident from the global pandemic this past year. The thesis has thus imagined the future of airports as an adaptive, anti-fragile system that embraces change across the different scales. A system that is able to dynamically absorb and rebalance itself to unforeseen demands and reconfigure to create the future passenger experience. And as a system where change is the very constant, anti-fragile airports of the future would be able to quickly adapt to our constantly changing landscapes.